Hey, this is late. This is late. It's late. <laughs> Hello guys, it's Lee. Rainy afternoon. Um, yeah, today I'm working on this behind me. This garden tractor with the dualies. Well, I usually have a disc on it with a little platform on it that uh, move around, but the linear actuator on it, and I've had it two or three years, and it's the kind that's weatherproof. Um, which I don't put it in direct rain or anything like that. I keep it under this carport. But anyway, it stopped working. And um, so I checked the connection where it plugs in from the tractor and I got, a, um, I got 12 volts going into it. So I'm gonna take it off. Maybe it's just went bad, but I'm gonna try to take a look at it and see if there's a loose wire. So I had to solder on a plug. But I did it a pretty good job. I mean, you know, I'm not an expert solderer, but I did it all right. But uh, I'm going to take this off, let you see it. So let me show you what I'm talking this about. The garden tractor, it's a Sears GT6000. I just modified it. But this linear actuator, which it's got a four inch, got a four inch um, you know, shaft on it. And I think this one was designed to pick up 500 pounds, which was fine for what I was doing. But this is the end of the plug that I soldered on. See, it looks like I did a good job. But I got, this has come from the machine. I, got, I do have 12 volts here, but this is not doing anything. So I'm gonna take it off, do an inspection on it. And um, I got another one ordered because you can't have too many of these. I mean, if I can get that working, I'll put it back. But I wouldn't mind having a linear actuator on the front with my the thatcher you know um i could outfit one on this i don't think i would but i could and i got a lot of places now i got it bolted on so i'm just going to take those off just down here like this we'll look at the numbers on it and uh, it worked for a couple of years and then it's just quit after maybe i can't remember if it's two or three years Let's get it on. Right, so what I'm gonna do, this is got the actuator here. I'm going to cut this plug off. Like this right here. It had too much cord anyway. And then I'm going to um, strip it down. Give me a second. I'm gonna strip this down, get two wires out. I'm just gonna hook them up to the battery straight and see if it goes in or out. Alright, so I got Cut the plug off. I think that's a good connection overall. And um, I got here, this is a good battery. So the way this works, you know, the switch is either up or down. So if you do it one way, the, um, the shaft goes in, you do it the other way, it comes out. So there's really not a right or wrong to it. So it ought to be doing something either way. It just ain't moving. So maybe something, you know, I, so I'm saying it's shot. So I'm going to get my new one out. Now, the problem is the new one, smaller in stature. Still a four inch, but, you know, I ordered it on Amazon and I didn't measure it out good enough. But let's go get it. All right, so this is the new one. So maybe that battery was dead, but uh, let me show you what it ought to be doing. And of course, where you're watching is you're going to watch this. And uh, I can't remember which way it ought to be, but I know this battery is good. It's coming out slow. And this is supposed to do 600 pounds. And it's the same four inch stroke. So, and just let me get that old one, just to verify for you that it don't work. So right here it is, let's see. Nothing that way. 
say about this way. See, it's just not doing. It. Got a little spark out of it. And you know, I'm sure it got wet and cor corroded inside. So, like I say, maybe one day we'll take this apart. I'm not gonna throw it away. So I know this works. I know what the problem is now. I'm gonna go into, now that I know that works, I'm going to um, wire it up. I'm not gonna solder it yet. I need to make sure which way to wire it for my switch. I want my switch, when, it, when I push it up, it goes up. So I don't know which direction to do, but uh, so let me get that figured out first. And what then I'm gonna we'll do, do is I'm going to, um, I'm just going to wire them up without any heat shrink or solder or anything and determine which way it needs to go because you can interchange them. It's just, you got to flip the switch and I'd rather get it right on the first time. So I have plugged it back in and for this experiment, I'm going brown to black and blue to red. And of course there's the cable going here. So what my hope is, it don't really matter. But here's the switch. So I'm hoping that if I push it down, it's gonna go in. Which is reversed. I'm pushing it down, it's going out. But I'm gonna go ahead and extend it all the way. So now I'm just gonna swap. So now I need to swap them. And that way, pulling it up will make it go in. I mean, you know, pulling it up will make it go out. Uh, now it's time to solder. Before you solder, get your heat shrink on. Um, so this, I'm so mad right now because I got two soldering irons and I don't even know where the tips are. I mean, look at this. I, I don't have tips. I mean, last time I used it, I kind of remember when well, the tip fall out. I mean, I've been looking everywhere for a tip. So I'm going to attempt to heat this up and solder it with the base. I mean, next time I'm out, I'm buying a soldering iron kit and throwing these away so I can have tips and everything. I mean, they work fine. But anyway, um, I'm just waiting for that to heat up. Then I'll solder them. We'll hit, hit the heat shrink on them. And then we'll think about installing that on the tractor. Do not judge me on my soldering abilities. I don't even have a tip on this thing. But that... I'm on. I know there's a lot of good different ways to do it. It's just the way I'm doing it. tipless soldering abilities. Oh, see that? So that's good because it got in the threads. It's just a big old ball of mess. <laughs> try to knock it all off or soak it into the threads better. All right, well, that's my soldering job. So what I'm gonna do, fold that over. I guess I'll go back out there and make sure it works before I heat shrink it. All right, so I went out there and double checked that everything works. So now, get these pliers right here and mash this down so the heat shrink could go over it. Here, let me redo that. That's just messy. Well, that might be better right there. I got the uh, bulk. It's still on there, so yeah, that's good. Gun, but also got a lighter. Q 
keep the water out. Pretty good. Can't leave it on there any too far, too long. Let that rest for a minute. Then we're gonna go try to install. All right, so I don't even know if the bolt holes are gonna line up because these are smaller. I might have to go in there and get different bolts. But we're gonna see what we got. All right, so I got the bottom bolt in. I wish they was a little longer, but we'll see what happens. Now I'm gonna use this bottom. And here it is. So, so everything works good, um, strong enough to do what I want to do, but I got to lift that up and I got that bracket on the top side. Remember this unit smaller or shorter than the one I had before. So I'm going to put my thinking cap on. And probably do some drilling and uh, lift up. I think I see some holes I can use anyway, and that's probably going to be about right. So let me tell you what I'm thinking. I mean, I got all, see, the last one was in that set of holes, and I just dropped it down one so it'd be a little taller. Look at there, I got that. So maybe I'll use that. All right, so went direct. Let's zoom in. So I just did a bolt direct on there. I didn't need the other ones. This might be a better option for me anyway. Now the only question is, is am I gonna have to cut off the length? We're fixing to find out. We're all, all the way down, but it's, when it goes up, I think I'm gonna have to cut that off. Six hundred pounds ought to be the lift capacity. Oh, I don't even have it hooked back up. Okay, so the arm, I unhooked that arm earlier to get to it. So, test number 15. There you go. I think we have success. That linear actuator was 65 or $80, I can't remember, something like that. I'll get the credentials out on it here in just a second. Um, I don't know, right now I'm pretty happy with it. Smaller, cheaper than that other one. Supposed to be waterproof. Now, you can't submerge it in water, but I don't plan on doing that. So let's... Uh... Let's go look at the paperwork. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe to Murphy Mowers. Okay, there's the linear actuator that I got. 12 volt. Stroke length is 100 millimeters, which is four inches. I Googled it, it's four inches. Low capacity, 3,000 3, in. I think transfers over to um, 600 pounds. Now, it's on. Is it, it, it was under. I mean, it was definitely under one hundred dollars. I just don't remember. I'll try to put a um, picture of my Amazon link in there. But it's, but four inches is what you want. I did. You know, that's what the original had for Sears. So that's what I went with. So it's just the longevity of it. I mean, that other one lasted a couple of years and I didn't use it that much. So anyway, we'll just see what this does. Um, all right, I think, I think I'm done with it. I think it's gonna work. Now I can put other implements back there if I want to. 
Now that it works again. All right, I'm out.